Now we're going to begin to talk about the physics of sound. The goals for this unit are to understand sound as the back and forth motion of particles, and also the properties that govern the, that motion, like how much and how quickly the particles can move back and forth. By the end of this series of videos, we want to understand what we're seeing when we see a visual representation of a sound wave. Just to set the stage here, of course there's some vocabulary that could be useful or less useful as we're talking about some of the principles and properties of sound, and I want to just start out by distinguishing physical properties from psychological properties. A physical property could be the frequency, how often the particles are moving back and forth. Psychologically, this refers to pitch. So pitch is the thing that we sense and we have a sense for as we're listening, but the thing that we measure is the frequency. These two go together very tightly, but it's good to have a different term for each concept. Similarly, we can measure the amplitude of the sound, how much the particles are moving, but what we perceive this as loudness. So when we say a sound is loud, the element that we're referring to as loudness can't really be measured because it's inside our heads, but we can measure the amplitude of a sound. Seeing some of these motions, we have two different kinds, right? So these are the things that we actually want to be measuring. When we're talking about normal sound that travels through the air, we're talking about the kind of motion that we see on the right here, longitudinal motion. So what we're seeing is uh, the vertical lines moving back and forth. Now we understand that there's some disturbance that ultimately moves from the left side all the way to the right side, but if you look locally, every single vertical line doesn't really move that much, right? It only moves back and then forward and then sort of back to where it started. So um, what we're seeing is, you know, an emergent property of motion that's moving, but locally things are just vibrating back and forth. Transverse motion, on the other hand, is when uh, we actually see the horizontal lines moving up and down. And this is sort of like when you're doing a wave in a crowd of people, like at a football game, where people aren't actually moving, and only from a distance does it look like something's moving left to right. What instead is happening is that people are moving up and then sitting back down, and locally not really, not much motion is going on. So this is the kind of motion that we're talking about when we think about sound. It's not that particles are actually moving from, you know, from my vocal tract to your ears. I'm just setting a process into motion where the effects of that process are moving bit by bit across space until they hit their ears. A really good um, simple definition of sound is just the vibration of particles. Um, but then going further, it's, we're saying that they're propagating as a wave of pressure and displacement. And of course, that wave travels through a transmission medium, um, usually air and sometimes water or something else. Um, but there are not a, a number of things that pull out of this. One, you need to have particles in order for the particles to vibrate. Uh, so we'll return to that concept a little while later. Um, and that there's a wave, right? So a wave means that something's going up and then something's going down, or something's going forward and then coming back. So there's a, there's a back and forth motion. It's not that just that sound is particles traveling, they're vibrating back and forth. So what I want to do now is visit uh, this website that I have linked here and linked in our lecture notes, just to talk about what this means and what some of the properties are that we're seeing when we see a sound wave. All right, here we are at the website, um, the Pudding website. <laughs> they have uh, a lot of different, really interesting visualizations of data uh, that I'd invite you to, to check out. So this one is about waveforms, as we can see. And what I want to do is just quickly walk you along the site just to point out a few things. But of course, uh, you would really benefit yourself by going through in detail and actually reading a lot of the narration that we see on the right side of the screen. So as we're reading these waveforms, the first thing you want to do, and, and which is the first thing you want to do for any kind of graph, is just know what the axes correspond to. So what we see on the horizontal axis is time. And the reason this is a good thing to point out is that it's tempting to think that what we're looking at is space, that something is actually moving along from the left side of the room to the right side of the room. But instead, what we're measuring is the passage of time. And then the y-axis is displacement. Another thing that it could represent is just pressure, and we'll get into how we can understand this as pressure, because as particles move, they actually force against other particles and they create higher um, spots of pressure. But at least on this website, it's characterized as displacement, which is fine. 
Okay, so uh, what what we see as the extent of that waveform away from the center is the amplitude. Okay, so a really important landmark on any waveform that we see is the center line at zero. And that means that we have no change in air pressure based on just what the room would be if nobody were making any sound. So as we change the amplitude, it's important to know exactly what part of the wave would change. We're not making it shift left or right in time. We're not making it go up and down any faster. We're just changing the extent to which the wave um, has you know, an excursion away from that center line. Frequency, on the other hand, is how often it undergoes a complete cycle of going up, down, and then back to its starting position, uh, and how often that would happen in one second. So sine waves, like many things, including voiced speech, is periodic. So you're going to have a repeating pattern. And frequency tells us how often that pattern will repeat if one second has elapsed. So in this case, we see one, one cycle that completes at half a second, and then another cycle that completes at one second. So we have two cycles within one second, we would say that this is a two hertz sound. So in our commentary over here on the right, we're, you know, we have the author, um, Josh Como was talking about how, you know, when we refer to these numbers, we're saying that some vibration will happen at say 444 times per second. So what we have here are now two sliders. So just like before, we can change the amplitude and the frequency will change how often we have a complete cycle that elapses in a certain amount of time. Right, so we no longer have the y, the x-axis labeled with time, but imagine that this whole you know black bar here represents one second. What we have here is you know around three cycles for this time window, or we can have two cycles, or one cycle, or even just half a cycle. And it's okay to have a half a cycle. Uh, it doesn't have to be a whole number. So now what we have is an animated representation of what's actually going on in the air. This, uh, I'm going to slow this down a little bit so we can maybe see it with a little bit extra detail. So down here in this animation, this is what is going on in the real world that's captured by this animated sine wave here. And just like before, what we want to look at is the range of motion and how quick the motion is for any particular particle. So if you're trying to sort of follow along with your eyes, we can see that any particular particle or any particular uh, vertical line doesn't really move that much back and forth. In fact, we can make it move very little, right? Um, and what it's doing is kind of pushing along the other set of particles that's adjacent to it until they push along the ones next to them and they push along the ones next to them and so on. Um, and what we're doing when we say frequency or amplitude changes is we're saying how often they're pushing. Right, so I can increase the frequency to be very fast, but I haven't changed the amplitude. The range of motion of each particle has remained the same. I can make the frequency only one per second, and again, the range of motion has changed, but the frequency of motion is now one per second. Another good um, animation that really demonstrates this is here, where we have one of those uh, piles of air particles highlighted here. And now we can really visualize how often that one is moving. We can make it fast, we can make it slow, and we can make it a large range of motion like this, or we can make it a very subtle change of motion like this. And as it turns out, very small uh, displacements of air can be picked up by our ears uh, and perceived as sound.